It happens though. That's up part. Yeah. Can you talk about what uh, what uh, Draymond does for you guys when he's sort of playing that center field on defense and moving around and helping the double team? Uh, he's got some of the best defensive instincts in the league, and when he's able to freelance and uh, you know go by field, that's when he's uh, at his best with playing the passing lanes. And obviously, I don't think there's a better play in the league as far as being able to rack up as many steals and block as many shots as him. Speaking of defense, uh, you guys spoke after the game how you were more active defensively in game two. Uh, what did you see on tape? <laughs> yeah, I thought we did a great job of stopping their initial first action and. Uh, after that, you know, they had to beat us one-on-one, -on -one and obviously it's going to work for them at times because they have such a talented team, but throughout a 48-minute game, we think, uh, we don't think that can beat us. Were you use the, you know, double team to guard the uh, Westbrook? What's that? Uh, do, were you use the double team to guard the Westbrook? Uh, uh, maybe, if he gets real hot, but... Uh, it's hard to double team a guy throughout the game because you know it gets you, it puts you in a disadvantage at times. But we'll see. You know it, it, that depends how the game flow goes. You go into game three, wondering, anticipating that maybe they make some adjustments to yeah. to counter what you're doing with with your defense. Yeah, I mean it's the playoffs. We assume they will. Uh, I mean that's the NBA though. You got to adjust on the fly, and the team they can make the quickest adjustments and do it with you know intensity. Uh, usually is the most successful. So for us, um, they try to do something different, whether it's you know, a different lineup or something. We still can't stray away from what's been working. You have to sort of pick your poison with these guys because they have two yeah. elite scores, and you sort of figure if you can make it a little harder for them, it's, it's probably for the best. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you definitely have to pick your poison, whether when to double them or when to play tight on them. But uh, you just try and make them work for every bucket they get because they got they got a they got to score so much that it, that will uh, wear on you for a whole if series. If you can get Robertson shooting a three, maybe you live with that. Hopefully not a corner three, but if it's above the break, yeah, we'll, we'll live with it. Individually, to play with somebody was uh, Andre. Andre Iguodala. Yeah. Oh, he's great. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen a better on the ball defender as far as you know, activity with his hands and his ability to stay in front of people. Uh, and uh, he kind of is like, uh, and especially for someone to come off the bench and be that effective, it's huge for us. Uh, gives us a spark every time. And best thing about Andre, you know, most of the time his defense leads to offense, especially in transition. Does he kind of see you and change the Yeah. I watch him a lot, and I learn from that. And uh, just playing against him, I learn uh, what tendencies he uses to um, be most effective. So I've learned a ton from Andre. Steve? Yeah, so he, we, we've been playing together three years now, and I feel like I've gotten better every year, you know, just learning from him. Steve said that Steph's uh, elbow seems fine. Did you see any difference in him today in practice? No, nah, he looks like he's making every free throw now, so I don't <laughs> see a big difference. So KD just get, got the six points in the second half in the game two. How did you guys do that? Uh, we did it as a team. Um, Guard a guy like Durant, you got to do it with team defense. You got to make it look like the paint's crowded and, you know, hope he's, uh, his jumper's a little off and uh, try and make him work for every bucket because he's his best when he's catching and shooting and he's in rhythm. And uh, he's one of the better scorers in the world when he's in that kind of rhythm. So you try and make him as uncomfortable as possible and just reaction? hope he misses. Pardon me. Uh, what was your reaction when you saw Gary Payton say that he was surprised and didn't think that Steph should be a unanimous MVP? Uh, um, I mean, it's a, it's surprising. I mean, unanimous. Uh, I think he should have been just because with the season we had. I mean, it hasn't been done in history, and we wouldn't we wouldn't have been close without Steph. So I'm not that shocked. I mean, guys are gonna be opinionated. Uh, obviously, Gary had a, uh, was very talkative when he played. So. Um, <laughs> It's not a big deal to me. Some stuff doesn't change. Yeah, no. <laughs> nope. It's not a big deal to me, though. After losing game one, uh, how much did that help this team not only refocus, but really guard against complacency, especially for the rest of the series? Well, uh, I mean, kind of put us in a hole, so we can't 
go to OKC and be satisfied with just winning at home. We got to go on the road now and win. And luckily, we've been the best road team all year. So if we just, you know, play smart with great focus and intensity, uh, we'll be good to go. Is there any worry because it was a blowout win last time you guys might come out? No, I don't think so. I don't think this team relaxes and we know what they're capable of. So we'll be ready. More aggressive than the second round. Is there any tips that, that Steve just asks you to do or just to, you play by yourself? Just play my game. Steve just tells me to be myself, be aggressive, and play smart. And if I do those things, uh, you know, I'll get a, log a lot of minutes to be successful.